It's been a long time since I last recorded for YouTube and for the podcast. I Life has been happening and it's been keeping me quite occupied. But that's not even an excuse or a reason. I've been thinking a lot about recording and the more I think about it, the bigger it seemed the the harder it became to do and over the past two months i found myself facing this giant of my own expectations because i kept wanting to do this i kept um, expecting myself to do it that it grew into this image of perfection where every little detail has to be exceedingly good to an impossible standard but even that was not the one thing holding me back perfection is nothing new to me and i was able to you know start a podcast and do um a youtube with that um still there it it isn't the sole perpetrator in this uh, incident i i realized that something is off and i tried to figure it out i i'm still struggling with it but in my attempts to fix it i'll tell you what i did i got more equipment for the channel both the YouTube channel and the podcast. I, some some of the equipment hasn't arrived yet because some problem happened with the manufacturer. I ordered the microphone that I can take out with me so I'll be able to produce audio quality equal to this anywhere I go. Even if there's wind, even if there's uh, noise around me. So that was an attempt attempt to facilitate my capacity to host this podcast and produce more frequently what I do here. The other thing that's been stopping me, and I'll admit to this, I always wanted the subjects I talk about to be perfected to the point no slurs, no ums or awkward breaks, which can be fixed in post-edit it's fine but still i did not allow myself any room for error any room for a human to be human to say things that may not have an accurate point that will change someone's life maybe or add exceptional value and now that's something adamant it's good to aim for that quantity in this situation is important it's not just quality you cannot just produce one perfect video and post one of those every three months then no one's gonna find that and and even those few people who support my work and listen to me they're gonna forget about it if it's not frequent enough and Here's an interesting story. There's a, f- a professor who told his students that he's gonna split them into two groups, and those are photography students. The first group will be graded based on how many photos they produce, while the second group will be graded based on just one photo that they have to pick. So that's the quality group and this is the quantity group what's interesting is that all the exceptionally good photos were taken by the group that did the quantity photos basically and and the point of this uh, example is when you're told to do quantity work and keep producing you learn as you work you grow better as you work and and out of a hundred attempts you will have a few of them that are exceptionally good and and if you just obsess over doing just one perfect product you'll be too afraid to attempt to make mistakes too afraid to create something 
that may have flaws, might have mistakes, but that's the thing. You cannot reach something so exceptional if you don't try enough, if you don't learn from the attempts, the many attempts that you do. Great is the enemy of good, or perfect is the enemy of good. So, moving on. Doing kindness and being a good person, yet feeling guilty. Now, I'm not sure how common that is. Tell me in the comments below if you're someone who does good and tries to help others, be a good person, be a good family member, be a good friend, yet still wrestle with the feeling of guilt, feeling like you're not good enough, feeling like you're not, you know, something feels off, you feel bad, you feel like you're not a good person. Tell me your experience, write it down, let's talk in the comments on, on YouTube. If you're, if you're listening through the podcast, go check out the YouTube channel and I'd love to hear from you too. Now, it isn't news to me that you can feel guilty even though you're not guilty of anything and the opposite is true you can be guilty and feel no guilt at all but that's the thing you do good you you act right and still that feeling of guilt is there and it it got me wondering why one of the possible reasons could be that you have an unhealthy environment and when i say environment i don't necessarily mean your immediate vicinity like where you live your family or your friends that's not necessarily the only environment you have environment is anything you interact with anything that communicates with you it could be your own self your own thoughts that's part of your environment in a way it could be social media it could be work it could be people in general that are surrounding you and not again not just family friends it could be people around you or it could be online so interactions really makes it difficult to gauge your own actions and your own deeds. One example I can think of, someone who does good and they take care of others and they're acting as right as they can act, yet it's solitary for them. No one acknowledges what they do, no one sees it. Now, that's all fine and good because you don't do kindness and help others for recognition. But the point is, you forget to gauge yourself. You forget the value of what you do. It happens. And, and then maybe someone sees a tiny fraction of you and says something mean to you or not say something mean to you, rather judges you harshly. It judges you harshly based on their miniature knowledge of you because they don't know who you are they just saw you for a few seconds or so and an, a tiny fraction that is about you and they just thought hey this person is a jerk or this person looks pretentious or this person looks shallow and you know it reaches you you hear them say that or you interact with them and it's negative now out of all that lack of communication that you don't have, you don't have any communication in regards to the good in you, that negative interaction, it builds up a big portion of the interaction that you have. I'm not talking about you being in solitary, not communicating with people whatsoever. I'm talking about being in a community that does not connect with you. Because here's the thing, you you can be around people and not really connect like all your conversations are on a shallow depth they're like the conversation are like uh, you're there i'm here yeah that's fine so what did you do today uh, nothing what did you do today uh, just went to work or studied and, and that's it so there is no connection and and i'm not talking hey let's let's communicate about the universe and the meaning of life and what does it mean that we are here no not that kind of depth but the kind of connection where you feel your souls connect you you're able to talk 
with them the way you talk with an intimate person, the way you talk to your parents or your siblings or your significant other. And you're like, hey, you know, I really feel this way. I'm not, yeah, I'm okay. I'm not, yeah, it's fine. No, this is how I feel. I feel uncertain. I feel burned out. I feel unseen and unheard. And it doesn't always have to be complaints. You can just have someone who is aware of what you're doing and what you're thinking. That's it. And that healthy communication, it, it filters and it moves and, and it, it processes these emotions in a healthy way. And it gets you out of that rut because you have a feedback loop that makes you feel recognized and felt. So that in itself, it eliminates the guilt that came out of nowhere, it seeped uh, into your soul, even though you haven't done anything to feel guilty about. I think that's one of the reasons you would feel guilty, even though you you do kindness and, and you take care of others. It's quite common, I'm, I think it's common that someone would act right, do what they know to the best of their capacity, is a good thing, yet feel burdened by feelings of guilt, feelings of an unseen burden. So I've been meaning to talk about honesty and lying. I've been meaning to talk about how it feels to connect with others, to make friends and the value of family. And, and there are a lot of things that I've been meaning to talk about. But I don't want to make this episode one dense topic filled with all of those things. And I'm, I'm certain I wouldn't even give them justice. I, I'll, I'll just make this episode like a comeback. Hopefully I don't just disappear again and come back three, three months from now. Although it is not a good strategy to, to talk about the future when you're uncertain of it. Not that you can all, not that you can ever be certain of the future, but yeah, that's that's it for today. Thank you for listening and watching, and I'll talk to you next time.